welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Join me now in a spirit of prayer. Eternal Lord of life, through your Son you have brought the light of life into the world. And as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, purify this light within us. Kindle our holy desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's coming. We who have so much, in such great amounts, cannot help but be awakened to the cries of those who have so much less. We hear the call of the hungry and the homeless. Soften our hearts and strengthen our resolve to face that call and respond quickly with what we can do to help clothe, feed, provide shelter, and demonstrate your love to all your people. We hear the cry of the grieving, the angry, and the fearful. Wake our slumbering attentiveness to their suffering. Help us bring your presence where courage has broken. Help us lift them up where they cannot find the strength themselves. Help us to be a part of your presence with them so that they may know your love, healing, and peace. We hear the groan of bondage in our world, whether to taskmasters or to substances or possessions that seek to take your place in the lives of your children. Give us the insight to help break the systems of evil which confuse and destroy. Help us bring all your people to liberating truth and your power to break even the bonds of sin and death. We hear the moans of all those who are ill and suffering. Be by the side of those dear ones in this hour and in the hours ahead. Where medicine and aid can assist your healing, let them find it. Where there is no cure, bring grace to endure and hope that survives. Give peace to the ones who face death and to those who face separation from loved ones because of it. We hear your voice of hope for your children and your church. Break up the hardened ground of our congregations and restore us to be fertile and productive. Give us grace to receive the new life of your rule and your realm 
and help us work to bring that rule and realm into reality. As we go through our daily lives, help us bring your presence into the lives of our families, our co-workers, and each of those lives we touch even briefly. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be our name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem, with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, Don, and Alexander, and all who were in the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are being asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Won't you pray with me? Loving God, in this moment, open us up that we might hear and receive the words you would have for us in this moment. Make our hearts soft. Make our minds open. Prepare us for your word. In Christ's name, amen. Have you ever had a hard time doing the right thing? knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Doing the right thing is not always easy. It's not always a task that we set out to do or that we plan 
for on a given day. Doing the right thing sort of just happens when necessary. But have you ever gotten in trouble for doing the right thing? I can't say that I have. I can't say that I've ever been scolded for doing what I knew was the right thing to do for everybody involved. I can remember when I was in elementary school and I was a crossing guard and I knew that it was my turn to go out with my stop sign and stand there so that my peers could cross the street safely. That was the right thing to do. And I didn't get in trouble for it. I knew there was a time when there was a friend who was sick and hurting. And I took them some soup and some Sprite to help make them feel better. It was the right thing to do. This was my friend and I was helping them. Maybe... You remember the story, even of the Good Samaritan. I know, I know, our text today is not the story of the Good Samaritan, but when we think about that Good Samaritan, that stranger that came along and helped the man who was lying in the ditch, that stranger did the right thing and was not scolded for it. It's an unfortunate time we live in when people are scolded for doing the right thing, for standing up to bullies, for making a stance to love and to honor and to help others. It's so disheartening when the church scolds us for doing the right thing, for standing on the side of justice. Jesus came to set the captive free, to stand with those who are oppressed. It is only right that we should do the same thing. It is only right that we should help those in need. Now, in biblical times, there were a lot of rules about who you can help and when you could help them and how you could help them. And yet and still, we were called to help. But who knew that you could get in trouble for helping others? Who knew that it was punishable even unto prison? In our story today, we are faced with Peter and John who have been locked up in jail and are going before the courts to defend helping to heal someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter, the Bible tells us, still being full of the Holy Spirit is bold and bravely avows that, hey, we healed this person. We did good. Is it wrong for us to do good? How? And not only did we do good, but Jesus, whom you crucified, was the one who gave us the strength and the power to be able to do the healing. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you, but I would really hate to be on the other side of this table. You see, it was religious leaders that they were speaking to. People who understood the Bible that we follow. People who understood what it meant to take care of one another and to help one another. And yet, they have imprisoned Peter and John for healing this man. It's a sad day when the church doesn't recognize Jesus. It's a sad day when the church refuses to help and to heal because it doesn't fit in their little schedule. It's a sad day when we as Christians do not stand up for the side of right and just and holy. But it's not uncommon. And it shouldn't even be a surprise. The scripture goes on to tell us that Jesus was the cornerstone that these men had rejected. 
And the dictionary tells us that a cornerstone was that piece that set right in the corner, but also set the foundation for the whole structure. Whatever they were building, you needed that cornerstone to tell you how to start and to make sure that it was sturdy enough to hold the weight of what was being put on it. Hmm. Jesus was the cornerstone that the people rejected. And even though in today's modernized technology and building, they don't necessarily need the cornerstone the way it used to be used, there is still the cornerstone in every building that is providing support and structure and instructions on how this structure can stand firm. That same ability still lives in us. When we go out and we help to heal our neighborhoods and our children and our churches and go to these hospitals, when we are out here living the life that Jesus came to live, we are being that cornerstone saying that we are the structure that can hold the weight as you build on it and we will carry it together. Doing the right thing can be costly. Doing the right thing can cause others to look at you funny, can cause others to want to dissociate from you because they're not used to doing the right thing. But are you willing to still do the right thing? I can remember when I was a teacher, we used to put up signs and it would say, courage is doing the right thing when no one is looking. It's one thing to do it for show and for fame and recognition, but can you still be courageous and do the good thing when no one is looking? Can you still do the right thing when technology has shifted the way in which we interact with one another? Yes, we are called to do the right thing in and out of season. And Jesus was our example for that. Jesus was the one who showed us how to love those that society had cast out. Jesus was the one who showed us how to feed those who were hungry, even if it meant taking the holy bread from the temple to give to others. Jesus was the one who showed us what it meant to care and love our neighbor, even if our neighbor was a stranger. Today, we are living in a time where our neighbors need us to do the right thing and need us to help. And only you know what you can actually contribute to your neighbors. Only you know what you can actually do in your community and for those whom you live with. The question is, will you? Will you do the right thing even if it costs you to go to jail? Now, Peter was bold and Peter said some big things to these individuals. And these individuals were the same ones who had crucified Jesus. So they technically could have done away with Peter in that moment. And yet they stood there and they listened and he told them anyway. Because of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to be brave and to be courageous and to say those things that need to be said even when we are afraid of the repercussions. Even when we are unsure of what will happen to us and our families, doing the right thing is always right. We who are Christians must stand up and boldly do the right thing in front of those who have power, authority to place us in jail. But will you stand on the side of justice? Will you stand with the oppressed? Will you live the life that Jesus Christ came to show us how to live? Your community needs you. Our communities need us to be bold, 
to be brave, to stand against the injustices of the world, to tap into the power that we have, that we've been given through the Spirit and the Holy Ghost. We have power to do the right thing, even when the right thing is hard. Be encouraged today to stand up for someone other than yourself. Be encouraged today to be the bold, brave voice in your community that speaks out against the injustices being done to the people that you live with. I have to do the same for those whom I live with. And together, we begin to make the change that our world needs. Together, we begin to shine the light of Jesus Christ and hold firm to that cornerstone piece that gives us the structure, the protection, and the foundation we need to go forward and be lights in this dark place. Be encouraged today that you have ability to make a difference right where you are. You don't have to go far from your front door to be able to meet the needs of someone in trouble. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. salvation perfectly restored in thee change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder love and As we come to the table now, I'm wondering, how could any of us be worthy of sitting at the very same table where Jesus sat and sits, Jesus presides? Much less, how could any of us ever be worthy of even trying to break the bread, as Jesus did, of taking the cup, pouring out that cup of wine, as Jesus did? How could any of us ever be worthy of passing along the bread and the cup in Jesus' name? And the answer, I think, is that we never could. Perhaps even the holiest of people might or might not be ever worthy of that, except through the grace of Jesus Christ and except for the commandment of Jesus that we do as he did, that we remember his example, where he seemed to sit at the table with anyone without asking their qualifications except for that they were people and God loved them. And Jesus then cherished the opportunity to sit with them and share with them. And so as we come to this table now, we 
humbly come offering bread and cup. We humbly come blessing the bread and the cup that's before you and that's here, this great table of God. We come now in remembrance, worthy only through the grace of Jesus Christ, worthy to come and sit at the table as Jesus ate with the table of those he loved. Won't you join me now in prayer? O oh, gracious God, we thank you now for this opportunity to break bread and share the cup in remembering Christ, not just what Jesus did for us, but also remembering what Jesus asked us to do for others. Bless the bread and the cup now that's before each person listening here, physical or in their minds, and bless their work as they go out from this place to serve as your servants. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For what I've been told, I pass on to you that the Lord Jesus, that last night as he was eating with his disciples, took a loaf of bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took the cup. and said to them, This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you tell the Lord's death, you tell the Lord's story until he comes again. Would you come to the table now? O oh God, send us from this place, armed and ready to be bold, to be brave, to speak out against the injustices, to help those who are in need, to be like Jesus. Give us courage, God, to be a foundation for those around us, to be a cornerstone in our communities. Help us not to shrink back or to be afraid. Send us from this place, bolder, wiser, braver, until we can come together again. In Christ's name, amen. If you cannot sing like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. a balm in Gilead to make the nations whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sin. 